I'm back out here in the woods, the deep dark woods. It's a very dense cedar forest that I'm in. Uh, I've just set up the levee. Gonna be doing an overnighter with, well, traditional gear, but obviously there's gonna be some modern gear involved in it somewhere. Um, I've been planning this video for a while, to be honest. I, I really like my traditional gear. It's heavy, it's bulky, but it's just that authenticity, that authenticness of using gear that's tried and tested. So it's mostly canvas. I've got a canvas levu there, the tent, which is a Polish levu. I've got a waxed canvas backpack down here and various kind of leather items and just different kind of tools and gear that I'm going to be using. I'm not going to say any brands in this video. If you're interested in any of the gear I'm using, I'll just put a link in the description. I arrived here fairly late. It's now, a, well, it's now 10 past five. I arrived here about an hour, just nearly two hours ago now. I've been roaming the woods, looking for a nice place to set up the tent. I found a space in between this big cedar tree to my left and a nice oak tree to my right. No dead hanging branches. And you know, it's hot, it's 24 degrees. It's probably about 22 degrees now, roasting. But I'm really looking forward to this overnighter. It's just gonna be a kind of 24 hour job and um, maybe even less than that to be honest, just a short overnighter, cook up some food. I'm gonna show you a fire lighting technique that's slightly different to what I've done before. It's gonna involve this piece of metal. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may not have. Uh, it's just something a little bit different. Thanks very much for tuning in though guys. I hope you enjoy the adventure and uh, let's get cracking and get fire going. So just about to light the fire here, I've cleared the leaves. You can see where the leaves are over there. I've cleared the leaves down here, still got a few more to clear there, but I've just arranged the twigs like this. And then you'll see why in a minute. So I can I can adjust these top twigs and in a minute I'm gonna place my fire down in the bottom twigs there. So no huge fire lay, just twigs all round. Slightly bigger logs there. This is camp set up at the moment, the Polish Levu with the, uh, the just the wood pole in there. This is actually two ponchos. You can see where they're buttoned together. Two ponchos, I've used this many times in my films and um, it's a really clever idea. Polish army used them, I think in the 1980s, maybe 70s, 80s. Uh, really cool pieces of kit. They are heavy, fairly heavy, but um, you know, nice low profile, lovely kind of green canvas tent. There's my waxed backpack. Got my cooks are here. Leather tinder pouch here, which I've made. Other things people, other people have made, obviously, a kind of possibles pouch. Then over here, axe, saw, which is actually over there. Wool blanket, which is going to be essentially my sleeping thing tonight. And this is my sleeping pad, which is just a double sheepskin. So, um, yeah, that's stitched together as well. So I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be a, a nice overnighter. Very peaceful.
Okay, what I've done here is this, because it's peak summer, obviously you need to be wary and cautious of having fires. So I've cleared the area of all the, the dry leaves. But I've also created this barrier with some sticks. That's just to help me contain the fire so that, you know, I can easily see any sparks that go wide of this. Should I need to sweep them in, I can just use a stick and sweep the sparks back in or sweep some, uh, any embers back in. And it just helps to contain that fire a bit rather than let it go, you know, completely wild. So I've just split some wood up here. Again, just, just forearm, I usually go in the summer, just forearm length pieces. Because I don't need a big, huge, wide, long fire for heat. I only need a cooking fire. Therefore, I only need my embers and everything fairly, fairly, I'm grilling today, so I only need stuff fairly close together. I don't need it wide for the heat. I just need a cooking fire, nice and small. So I go for forearm length pieces split them because then you expose the dry interior we have had a bit of rain lately so it's not completely dry but um, yeah and that way I can also just use these longer pieces as you can see here I've, I've kept the fire together I just swept it in like that and that's just gonna help contain it all and get a nice bed of hot embers in the middle which I'll cook with later so you know summer fires are no joke you have to you have to be wary of what you're doing and just make sure that you're constantly watching the fire because it's very easy for it to get out of, out of hand. And I know I might be teaching some of you to suck eggs, but it, you know, it's, <clears throat> it can be a really serious thing. So responsibility, I guess. That's, I just, I like to be responsible when I have a fire. So I'm just monitoring and watching everything. Um, and I'll tell you about the fire lighting technique in a minute. I'm just putting these face down. You can see that's already burning like that. And I don't mind that smoldering away nice and slow. If I need to get some oxygen under them, I just rest one on top of the other like that. Blow a bit. and then it's away. But I don't need a roaring flame. Again, roaring flame is going to mean loads of sparks. I just need it smouldering, really. Just let it burn away sm slowly and smoulder. I don't need, I'm not going to let this burn all night. I don't need it to. It's only a cooking fire. And I'm not cooking huge pieces of meat and stuff, so I don't mind it being fairly small. I'm going to put that one over the top like that. Oh, look, it makes an A. Perfect A for where I am. That's the A I was talking about. A for awesome. Totally awesome. T-A. In fact, T A outdoors. So, fire lighting wise. I'll just show you quickly for some of you, because some of you may not have seen this before, what I was using. Apologies to the guys that have, I'll only do it briefly, just show you briefly. So, I said it was traditional gear, this trip, mostly. So here I've got a Hudson Bay, Hudson Bay Company kind of tinder box. Uh, this is a copper one, you can get them in brass as well, again I'll link them below. These are pretty neat pieces of kit. I've, I have used these before uh, on my channel. Nice slim line copper copper box. I've got the uh, a leather compartment that it stores in. This top piece has a magnifying glass in there so that you can, actually this time of year is probably really good for it. You can start fire by sunlight, just holding that over your fire. And then inside, let's just have a, have a gander. This is where I keep my kind of traditional flint and steel. So there's my steel, my steel striker. There's a nice piece of Norfolk flint, I think it is. Just, you know, simple enough. Uh, I keep some jute twine in here as well, which I can fluff up. And then this, I actually lit some charcoal off first, and then I blew that charcoal off ember to this, which is a piece of amadou, which is, I believe, the trammer layer of the horsehoof fungus. I think it's called Fomes fomenteris. Something along those lines. <laughs> I'll try and link it in the description for you. But this is really, really neat stuff. Uh, I think you boil it to process it. And it goes like a suede texture. Lovely smooth suede texture. And this can uh, take a flame really easily. Look up trammer layer, trammer layer of, uh, of fungus, guys. It's, it's, a, it's a really interesting topic. Couple, another piece of flint in there as well. So I keep all that in there. I tend to put the uh, trammer layer or any kind of charcloth on the top. That way it doesn't scratch 
my uh, my lens there. Just piece it like that. I guess you could put an elastic band over the top of it if you want, but I don't. So obviously the outside of the lens won't get scratched because of this cap, and the inside won't because of the uh, the cloth that I put there. So that copper tin I put in a cloth because the, the kind of oils in your hands will react with this and turn it a kind of green colour. And you'll notice that with a lot of kind of copper, old school vintage copper cook pots, bed pans, just general kitchenware and things like that. It goes like a green colour uh, where it's reacting with chemicals from your hands. So I tend to use, and you can see this cloth has a bit of leather dye on it just from the, the leather that I was storing it in, but I tend to wrap wipe it a bit with a cloth just to get my the oils of my hands off the metal and then that goes in this leather carrying pouch so that's essentially my not not like my fire lighting kit but my traditional fire lighting kit I don't take this out on every every uh, overnight I go on that just wraps up like that and folds around again and do you know I love it's like a, you, you guys know me right I love traditional gear I love I'm a, I'm a kind of modern outdoorsman, I guess. I love using both traditional gear and the modern day gear. I can see the benefits of both. But for me, I just love that aesthetic feel of using traditional gear. And I have quite a bit of it. And then the the method I lit the fire with, so that, that the spark went onto the char cloth. I blew that ember onto the amadou. I then had a tinder bundle of, which is from my tinder bag, of dried inner bark of cedar. If you've watched the previous I don't know, th two, three videos of the channel where we were doing the wigwam series. Wigwam, by the way, not wigwam. Wigwam. Didn't learn something new there. Um, you'll see that we were using the inner bark of um, cedar. Really good, fluffs up in a tinder bundle, but you need to make sure it's dry. Then, rather, normally with a tinder bundle, right, you would hold it to your, to your lips and you would blow. You would add your oxygen that way. And often you'll get the smoke coming in your face and it's, you know, it's not... Not always the most comfortable experience, but it's it's fine if you know what you're doing, but sometimes it can take a lot of breath and energy out of you when you're doing that. So that's where something like this comes into, into play. Uh, again, I'm not gonna tell you what brand it is and things like that. It's actually pretty cheap kind of piece of material. But essentially this is like a, a fire blower. I'd probably call this a fire blower. This one's a telescopic version. I don't know, about 80 odd centimeters long, not quite a meter and it starts thick at one end and tapers down thin to the other end. I actually was blowing it on the wrong way at one point in that clip, which you might have seen. You need to, when you're blowing these, blow from the thick end down to the thin end. The thin end should be near the fire because that's then funneling all that air, that oxygen, and concentrating it, almost like a jet engine, really. And it really, really works. It seems gimmicky, I know. And I've always thought of these as gimmicks until I started using them. Tiny piece of kit really, packs into your backpack really easily, doesn't take much space, nice and lightweight. You can, little hack for you, you can actually use old car aerials for these and you can make them from old car aerials because uh, they're just, well they're cheap really and they're, <clears throat> they're the same sort of material. On the end of this one there's a little bit of brass, you might not be able to see that. There, there's a bit of brass there and that's because it's to stop, that's going to be closest to the fire, it's going to stop the flame and the heat melting the actual metal tube here that takes the heat first you'll find that you can take a big breath and be blowing for ages because all your air is constricted so it takes time to come out but it comes out at force you can see the fire is not quite roaring as i'd like it probably because this cedar is still quite damp so using the uh, the fire blur just one big breath And that's already pretty much going again. A couple more and it'll be roaring. Do you know, it's almost like bellows when you're forging or when you're lighting your fire at home and you're using bellows it is a bellows basically a pocket bellows uh, but it, you can see how hot that wood gets look at it glow look at the glow ah oh, nerding out on fire
wanted to show you something quickly. So I found a piece of oak on the floor that looks completely rotten. You can see all the moss on here. And the bottom end, look at that. Like falling apart. Punky, broken up oak. But upon closer inspection, I found out that there's some really good, albeit a little bit punky, but decent dry firewood. So it goes to show, don't, ne ne don't neglect the logs that have moss on them. Look further up. All I did was just push my fingernail into it and pick at it to see if it would fall apart. But the best test is literally saw through it with oak, it's a hardwood. If you're struggling to saw through it, chances are your saw blade's either blunt or it's probably decent wood and it's actually only just a little bit punky on the outside. Ideally, you don't want punky wood at all. But this was on the floor and that was the root end. I say the root end, the kind of branch end, rotten. This section, you can see, carried on off it. Again, moss, rotten, but it stopped there and it stopped here. Then it's rotten now. Completely rotten at the other end. So out of that, I got two decent sections of oak, which are going to be, that's enough now to, to cook food on. I just need to split them up. So um, yeah, don't neglect the mossy logs. So when you're splitting, when I split wood in the woods, <laughs> when I split wood in the woods, when I split wood with no chopping log, like a block, just use another piece, another log underneath, providing the ground is sturdy and it's not going to wobble, that's going to act as a shock absorber. And then, like I say, I keep my lengths fairly small. Now this is denser wood and my axe isn't as sharp as it used to be, it needs a good sharpening, so it might take a few goes, but you can see this is actually longer than my axe here, right? But it should still split. I'm using that belly, that curve of the axe, the helve just there for my hand so my knuckles don't get mashed. And then I'm just putting the, the just the bottom, bottom area of the axe. I always do a few small taps to begin with to get the bit, the blade in. Right, so that's, that's pinched. I've already got the gap there. And after each one, I just get a little bit harder. Get my knees a bit. You see that's in now. Now that's split to the side because of the knot. Let's try this side. Okay. Now obviously I've not got a full round log to split the next one, but I've got that half piece there and I'm only going to use the end of it because it's going to wobble like that side to side. So let's get in close on this. This is my half kind of broken off piece, but it's split. Check it's not wobbly. That's where I want it to strike down. Axe spade, get it in. Apologies headphone users. Boom, there we go. Two pieces of wood, two pieces of oak. I might split those again because I don't need a roaring fire. I can control it a bit more with smaller pieces. Whoops. Now that's bouncing too much, so let's put it back over there. And the two pieces. That's going to act as a little fire lay. Let's get some oak on there. The non rotten piece. Again, I don't have to get smoke in my eyes with this.
So while my food is uh, cooking, I've got a venison, two, ven two little kind of venison steaks and a lamb shank on the go. I'm trying not to burn them, hold on. Yeah, while the, uh, while the food's on the go, I thought instead of filming in the dark inside the Lavoo, my sleep setup, I'll do it out here. So I've got my double, double sheepskin stitched together. And because I'm a small guy, I actually fit on this perfectly anyway full length so I could sleep to be honest it's so uh, warm tonight I could sleep straight on that but as a backup I've got my uh, wool blanket um, again I'll try and find where I got this in the description but it was on eBay somewhere so take the straps off and I'll show you how I normally sleep with my wool blanket I like doing wool blanket stuff kind of um, autumn time just a bit nicer sometimes I do it in winter but mostly like around the autumn so it's a double kind of double wool blanket and what I do is I'll have it half on the bed like that pretty much like that then I'll lay on it grab the other half probably start with my feet if it's winter I tuck my feet in properly wrap that over my body and then that's how I'll sleep tonight if anything, I might be quite hot, so pillow-wise, I don't need the pillow. I've just got a little jumper and a t-shirt, sorry, in my bag, extra layer, so that can prop me up, but this sheepskin's enough. And, um, yeah, I'll just sleep with this wool blanket like that. If I get too hot, I can easily ventilate it by just either half on, half off, or just, to be honest, completely open like that. I think it would be so warm in there. But, yeah. It's, it's a setup I, I like doing. Chances are I'm going to get eaten a bit. I've got some uh, bug repellent on me. But it's inevitable, this type of woodland, this time of year. There's ticks everywhere, there's mosquitoes everywhere. But it's still fun. I'm looking forward to it. It's quarter to seven. My food's been cooking a fair while, to be honest. Hopefully it'll be ready in a minute. And then I can uh, eat. Relax, enjoy the last of the sunlight. We've probably got another two hours to be fair, but because it's such a dense woodland, it's setting in the west over there. We're going to lose the light quite fast. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm content, as they say. I'm very content. Things in life are really good at the moment. I did the, the farmhouse episode uh, last week, I think. Which isn't a, everyone's cup of tea, I get it. I do kind of bushcraft camping outdoor videos and then suddenly I drop a farmhouse video in there. Uh, so, I, you know, I get it, guys. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think I said it in the pinned comment. It's, it's quite a big part of my life now, the new house. So I kind of want to share it with you uh, just so you can get a bit more insight into, into what I do outside of the woods. I don't live in the woods. I'd love to live in the woods, but I don't live in the woods. Em's doing well, for those that ask, my wife, she's doing well. We had our 20-week scan with the baby uh, last week. All is well, fingers crossed. We're still not going to do know the gender. We don't want to know the gender. There's very few surprises left in life, I think. You know, with social media and everything and the power of the internet, there's not really many surprises left. So I feel, I don't know, not knowing the gender is kind of one of the last surprises we can get. And it will be a surprise. So, uh, yeah, I'm cracking on with the house at the moment. Loads of interior decorating and uh, repainting, recarpeting, and keeping on track of the garden and things like that. Like I say, those farmhouse episodes, they won't be off as often as these kind of videos, but I'll throw them in there every now and then just so you can see what I get up to. But I understand if you don't want to watch it, that's fine. Obviously, I'd love for you guys to watch it, but I get it. If it's not your cup of tea, it's not your cup of tea. This, by the way, is the, I think, the medium-sized Lavu. They come in a number of different sizes. I don't know how many. All I know is the sizes are judged by the metal rivets and I've got two of them. The metal kind of holes. Let me show you. So basically, I think it's this one. No, it's not this one. It's, whoop, I just loosened the whole of it. What a mic. Right, this one here. So you can... Whoa, that's out of focus. So you can generally tell the size of your levy, which one you've got, by the number of these rivets. These, uh, these holes basically. I've got two. You can get them with one, which is much smaller than this. You can get them with three. I don't know if you can get them with four. I'm not sure. This is, I guess, the medium one. I don't know. It's good for me. Size-wise, it works. 
you can see where you put your arms. If this is one lavu here, one po poncho, that's the other poncho. So you'd have an arm coming out there and, and an arm the other side, and you'd wear that. And I think you team up with a buddy during the, uh, the the war days or just the general military back then, and you pitch your tent together. And these would sleep two people, I believe. I like them. I've been using this for years now, and it's still my, probably my favourite tent. I love it. The lamb shank is cremated. It's ready to eat. Venison's still got a while yet, but that's possibly ready to go. Well, it's now coming up nine o'clock. Still, still a bit light, but it's dark in this woodland. I've put a couple more sticks on the fire just to get a bit, mostly for ambient light, really, because I'm quite tired. I'm going to hit the sheets soon. So yeah, it's been a good evening. I've enjoyed it. I'm good, glad to be back in the Levu. Glad to be doing this kind of video for you guys and for me, really. I'm enjoying it, but I'm going to call it a night save some battery and some footage for tomorrow. I've, I've got to be somewhere tomorrow morning, so I'm not going to stay too long, but I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow.
Well, I slept pretty good last night, to be honest. I think I woke up about maybe two or three, two or three times, which is good for me because I'm usually up quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I, I had a great night's sleep. And you know, this morning is the first morning it, it, it felt like autumn. I know it's only <laughs> like first of August, but just felt that nice crisp chill in the morning, which I absolutely love. You know, the fall or autumn is just my favorite time of year. And now I feel like it's, obviously it's only really, it's two months away probably, but, oh, just that feeling, because I'm in this dense woodland, you know, it's so much cooler. Not much sunlight, there's a lovely kind of sunrise this morning, which I tried to get some shots of when I woke up. Don't know if I did it justice or not, I was playing the footage back and I've got quite a bit of lens flare going on, even from some of last night's fire footage, so apologies for you guys if you started seeing random flashes around the camera. Oh, good old fashioned English cup of tea. And just sat here by the fire, letting it burn out now, because like I said, I don't need it for heat really. Just enjoying the woodland this time of morning, it's really peaceful. Those Lavoos, man, they get so, they're so dark inside, you can't really tell. It, it just feels permanently nighttime. Obviously, sunrise is probably 5 4 30, and you just, in there, it's absolutely pitch black. At, I woke up at six. It's pitch black. Came out here. Sun was, you know, a couple of hours up already. Yeah, I haven't done this sort of camp for a while. That's my bugs stuff, by the way, that bottle. Which came in handy last night. Obviously this isn't a lightweight trip. I didn't use my stool in the end, but yeah, traditional gear generally isn't lightweight, so. It's a mixture of traditional and modern. Cooks it, I just hang on the outside of this clip. Everyone's got their own way of packing bags. It's just the way I'm doing it at the moment. That's first aid in that one. Oh, almost forgot. This is my backup t-shirt which I wore yesterday when I went to sleep so I wasn't too cold. Million subscriber limited edition t-shirts are still around. There's only there's less than 30 days now to get these. Last month I hit a million subscribers and I thought it'd be cool to bring out this kind of limited edition one million t-shirt. And uh, yeah, there's a few, there's still some left in stock. So if you want to get these, they're taofficial.com, ship worldwide, good quality, 100% cotton. I just, I wear these all the time. Those of you that bought my merchandise before will know it's good quality. But yeah, less than a month left guys on that, so. There's also cups, mugs, and things like that. So if you're interested, link in description. Same with all the gear, links in description. Uh, this does have an axe loop. I didn't use last time actually, I walked in with it. Let's try it out. 
obviously it's going to stop there because of the ground, but that's cool. Saw I put on the top, one extra lens there. I think we're pretty much there. Yeah, we're back. I think I did that with a sheepskin. It's got to make use of the space. This is a smallish bag, great for like a day pack, but you could easily do multiple days with this. Three days, four days, depending on how big the food is that you bring. And then the saw still in the top there, so that can get tight. That's all attached. Saw went in the top. Locks everything in place. Then it's just the levy on the bottom, which I tied in with some paracord. I need, I need to use a leather strap, really. So I just, as you can see, it's a bit messy, but I. I need to get some leather straps for the uh, the levy, but all lashed on now with paracord, and we are pretty much good to go. I've just got to clean up the campsite area. Essentially, just throwing the leaves back on the area to make it blend into the, the surrounding woodland, so it doesn't look like I've been there. Old leave no trace, really important. Right, I think we're good to go. Well, that is it. Whoa, I was zoomed in. That's a wrap, guys. Thanks so much for watching this episode. It's been a good fun overnight in the dark wood. Don't know why I'm calling it the dark wood. Probably because I've had to film with the camera settings or boost it up because it is pretty dark. But it's been good fun. I've enjoyed it. Hope you've enjoyed watching it and joining me on the adventure. Who knows what the next adventure is going to bring. Really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a little thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed, if you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. But make sure you tick the little bell so that you can get a notification when I upload a video. Also, don't forget, subscribe to Dad's channel, our other channel basically, TA Fishing. Loads of fishing, not just fishing, but just general outdoor stuff as well. Dad runs that one. There's a link in the description to that. Merchandise and all of that stuff. Links in the description. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Back for the camera.